In this video, we're first going to graph and draw the region bounded by those equations. And then we're going to rotate this region about the x-axis using the disk method. Let's draw this thing first. e to the x is an exponential function. A typical e to the x function passes through the point 0, 1. But since we're graphing e to the x plus 1, we're actually going to pass this graph through the point 0, 2. x equals 0 is just the vertical line at x equals 0. x equals 1, again, just a vertical line. And y equals 0 is a horizontal line on the x-axis. So I think that you can see the region that we're looking at here. We're going to slice this region up and rotate it about the x-axis. Each one of those slices when rotated is going to give us a disk with a width dx. We're going to find the volume of each one of those disks and add all those disks up from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So the volume of the entire rotated region is going to be the sum of all of the little volumes of the little disks added together. Well, the volumes of each one of those little disks is just going to be pi times the radius squared times dx in this case. And you'll notice that wherever I drew this little disk, its radius was going to be given by this function e to the x plus 1. So we can just replace r with e to the x plus 1. And again, we're going to integrate from the lowest value of x, which is 0, to the highest value of x, which is 1. That's our setup. Now, how do we integrate it? Well, we can start by pulling the pi out. And the only way I can see to integrate this is to FOIL this out. Keep in mind that e to the x times e to the x is e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. And now we can integrate each one of these three pieces fairly easily. The integral of e to the 2x turns out to be 1 half e to the 2x. Technically, what happened with this piece of the integral is we did a u equals 2x substitution. That gave us du is 2dx, and that brought this 1 half down in the integral. Okay, next term, integrating 2e to the x is just 2e to the x. Integrating 1 just gives us x, and we can evaluate that from 0 to 1. Okay, let's plug in the upper limit of integration, subtract, and plug in the lower limit of integration. Let's see what kind of simplification we can do. If we just pull our pi out in front, we end up with five non-zero terms, and we can at least combine these three constants. One plus two is three, which is six halves. I'm going to subtract one half from that to get five halves. And that is going to be our final answer. I'll zoom out so that you can see the setup as well. And I think we are finished with that video. All right, I'll see you in the next one.